Hello and welcome back. Before we start with the lock in and lock out functionality, I would like to fix a couple of mistakes that I made in the last video. This one here should be credentials, so I'll get rid of this end. And a bin should be public, not private. I'll save this. My application is running. So because I save it, it is redeploying. Now, if I open up the browser and try to access the register page, you see that we have no problem accessing that. Now, if I try to access the profile page, you see we have been redirected to the login page. Since it doesn't exist, we got this error. This is to show that Spring Security is already taking shape. And if I also try to access the user's page here, you see, again, we have been redirected to the login page. So let's go ahead and start creating the login form. So in the index.html file, I'll start by defining the following URL. I'll call it login. And I'll handle this in the index controller. So I'll open that up. I'll just copy this method here and paste it. Yeah and change this one here to show login form. This one here should be login and it should return a form that is located in the views folder. I'll just call that login form. So this login form is going to be similar to the register form. I'll just copy the register form and rename it. This should be login form. I'll open that up. And here we need only the email and the password fields. So I'll get rid of this one here. and also this one here as well as these and I'll repeat the same for the email field so I'll get rid of this and this one here we don't need the object we however need to specify here the name so this name should be password and this one Spring security requires that it should be called username. It is compulsory. The action here should be called login. And here, if there are any login errors, I'll display a message. So instead here, I'll type param.error to check if there is any error. This is coming from Spring Security. And I'll get rid of this, as well as this one. And also this. And here I'll type the following message, invalid email or password. This will be alert, alert danger. So if everything works correctly, we should be able to log in. I'll open up the browser. My application was running, so I don't need to restart it. And if I try to navigate to the profile page, it should redirect me to the login page. That is good. If I try to submit this, I should get an error message. This is also okay. And now I'll try to log in with an email and a password. I don't remember the ones we created. Let me check in the database. Okay. I'll try here one at pay.com. The password should be one, two, three, four, five, six. Voila. As you can see, we successfully log in and we are directed to the profile page. And because we are logged in, we should be able to access the user's page. 
this is also working fine next let's implement this lockout functionality so the lockout functionality is actually very easy all we need to do is to send a post request of type lockout so i'll open up the header.html file and we have the form here this one i will just declare an action and i'll call it logout the method should also be post so method post so back in the browser i'll refresh this page and then if i log out it should redirect us to the login page fine this is also working so the only thing we have to do now is to protect these views for example if someone logs in they shouldn't be able to see the login and the register link again and someone should only see the logout only when they are already logged in also if someone is an admin they should be able to see the profile as well as the user's page and a normal user will be able to see only this profile page so we are going to be implementing that in the next tutorial until then see you